We're turning to Paris now to talk about Neymar. He's been on the end of some abuse from the PSG fans. They haven't quite forgiven him yet for his uh, more than flirtations with Barcelona. Some booing, some objects thrown apparently by home fans in the second half of a recent game. Neymar, for his part, is scoring big goals. He's scored late winners in their last two league games. There's a brilliant goal against Lyon in particular in recent times, which is worth digging out. We have Philippe Auclair on the line for more. Evening, Philippe. Good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. So they weren't best pleased that Neymar made it so damn clear he wanted to get the hell out of Paris. <laughs> That's the euphemism of the season, I think. Yes, they were not too pleased. Well, the, certainly a, a large part of the uh, of the uh, people who go to the Parc des Princes uh, of PSG fans were not pleased at all. And uh, in fact, what's happened since he came back uh, has been... Um, well, not exactly edifying, but um, shows that there's an awful lot of work to be done before he's uh, brought back into the fold as far as the fans are concerned. And uh, I would even go as far as saying that some of these fans, uh, we know that there's a very strong nucleus of ultras at PSG, uh, have basically made it almost like a, a sign of their ultratude uh, to uh, make sure that he doesn't feel welcome. So as he said himself, uh, he's going to feel like I'm playing away from home a lot of the time. When we talk about booing, I haven't seen the games in full. Is he being booed every time he touches the ball? Is it when his name is being read out? Is it the whole stadium? Is it just the ultras? What are we talking about here? Uh, we're talking about booing. Uh, we're talking about very, very loud booing. But, you know, I mean, he's, uh, he's played very few games since he, you know, he missed the first four games of the league season uh, for fitness issues, uh, so they say. Uh, came back a bit surprisingly against Strasbourg. Uh, which was uh, at the Parc des Princes, because actually many of us thought that um, PSG would choose to make him play his first game away from home, so that to soften the blow, so to speak. Mm. And he was booed roundly every time he touched the ball when his name was said. There were banners uh, everywhere. And then, of course, what does he do? He did what Neymar does. He scored the winner <laughs> at the very end of the game, and a, a spectacular winner as well. I mean, you, you've all seen it, mm. I'm sure. And... Um, with this wonderful, I don't know what you call it, scissor kick uh, of the post, and then three points for Paris Saint-Germain, but it still still was booed. And then he's played one more game, uh, but that was at um, at Lyon, yeah. uh, where he had a, a... The reception was very, very hostile, both from the um, away fans, even though they celebrated his, his winning goal again late in the game, and an absolutely magnificent, uh, absolutely magnificent goal. But also the uh, Lyon supporters pelted him uh, with uh, various projectiles uh, when he was taking corner kicks. I mean, um, you're talking, um, uh, they said it was just sheets of paper, you know, and little paper balls. But, you know, I saw some lighters, I saw some uh, some bottles as well thrown at him. And uh, lo and behold, absolutely no action was taken. People seem to think it's perfectly all right in France. Wow, well, OK. I didn't realise it was quite that serious. So, um, it was bad. Yeah. It was bad, and it was, and also, it was, it was, it was particularly bad um, uh, because, as one of the way it was filmed, you could really see what was going on. So I suppose we were more aware of it. That perhaps we would have been with a wider angle, but the camera focused on Neymar. We could see things raining on him, uh, and and the hostility, the faces distorted with uh, with anger and and and. And hatred. There's no other word for it. And uh, and the stewards doing absolutely nothing. Um, and uh, people are again thinking it's absolutely normal. So he's not exactly. He's having a grand time on the pitch. Mm. He's been superb. Um, but he's not. Um, he, he's not. I'm, I'm sure he's not really enjoying um, his current football life in in France, which was actually one of the reasons. And he's life in France full stop, which was one of the reasons, if not the main reason why he wanted to go to start with. Yeah. Philippe, was Neymar a very popular figure with the PSG fans up until the summertime? Like, his histrionics are divisive and, and many people find them quite unappealing. Had he had a very good relationship with the PSG fans up until the summer or were there reservations about him? There, there were some reservations in some corners, but on the other hand, and, and especially because, you know, he hadn't, hadn't necessarily pulled his weight all through the season, the fact that you couldn't rely on him all of the time. He was injured so so often. His uh, uh, off the pitch lifestyle, uh, you know, the famous party that he went to, his birthday party, the, the 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 way that he used to spend a lot of time in Brazil, come come late for for training, preseason training, and so on. There were many people who were a little bit, to be honest, were not too happy about that. But on the other hand, every time he was on the pitch, he delivered. And there's one thing you cannot say against Neymar: people could stop.
stop at uh, the histrionics and uh, and the hype and uh, the merchandising, uh, you know, puppet, uh, whatever you want to call him. But on the pitch for PSG, he was genuinely one of those players who never accepted to be beaten, even when PSG went from through some pretty pretty rocky times last season in particular. And of course, he missed a lot of games, but he always pulled his weight in the games that he was in. So the attitude, I would say, towards him was, was split, but he was the bad guy, but he was our bad guy. Yeah. Uh, this time, because of the very public nature of his flirting with Barcelona and all the stories which have been coming in, and, and especially uh, what he said himself about basically, you know, I want to go, um, and I'm not going to achieve anything in Paris, and I've had enough of the city, and all these sort of things. Uh, yes, that has turned now the public uh, dead against him, um, and uh, which is uh, which is a shame. He is a league uh, superstar, and since he's come back, he's actually shown us what we were missing. Very interesting. Now, like, we can always dehumanise people who have such celebrity. Yeah. Neymar, for his part, has been asked about this, as you might imagine. He said, it's not the first time I've been booed by everyone. It's sad, but I know that from now on, every game I play will be an away game. Mm. So it looks like he's showing a bit of resolve and has resolved himself to this situation. It could have gone one or two ways. I mean, he could have very easily said, I'm not playing in this environment. I'm downing tools. No, it looks like that's the not the style of the player. I, don't know. I think many people misunderstand that. Is that the, the, this player, despite the way he plays and the way he behaves on the pitch and off the pitch, uh, is somebody who is, is a genuine winner and somebody who's always been like that. And uh, I had the chance, actually, I was just, um, not that long ago, I was in Edinburgh for a sports conference where I listened to his, his, his father, uh, Neymar Senior, and, and also his, uh, and I had a, a long chat with his lawyer, uh, Marcos Mota, and um, uh, talking about him and who he was and, and what exactly had gone through his head during this crazy summer. And the thing is that you've got somebody who is fundamentally, wants, he wants to have a great time, <laughs> uh, as a footballer, he enjoys it, he wants the joy of it, and he was not getting that in Paris anymore. He was also missing his friends. He's left a lot of friends back in, in, in Catalonia. And that, that's, that's, that's why, he, you know, you shouldn't look further than that. It was not some kind of extraordinary plot to make as much money as possible from PSG of Barcelona, even though, obviously, if the operation had been concluded, it would have been quite a good one for the Neymar family. But that was not the prime consideration in, in what he said. And he's not a happy player, but on the other hand, as I said, and we'll repeat, he's a winner, and which is why he hasn't hid hidden on the pitch when he's been with Paris, despite the booze, despite everything. Uh, he's when he's been there this season, only two games, only 180 minutes. Uh, we'll see him. Uh, I mean, this evening as well. Uh, I, I should think so against Stade de Reims. But uh, he's been absolutely. Um, uh, how can I put it? He's, 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 he wants to give everything, genuinely, yeah. when, he, when, he, yeah. when he's on, on the field of play. And I don't, think, I don't think he's one of those players who's going to go in a sulk and, and decide, I mean, he might do in other areas, but once he is on the pitch with that shirt on and the ball at his feet, he's a different man. And um, this is probably the only way he can be brought back into the fold and convince of the Paris um, supporters that he's with them 100%. But it's also, if you look beyond, because, I mean, nobody has many doubts about the fact that he's not going to be a PhD player forever, and that is a saga that was going to run on and on and on, uh, it's also the best advertisement he could do for his own um, talent and, and mentality and professionalism as a player. Philippe, did, at that conference, did his father or his lawyer give any indication as to why he actually moved to PSG? Because from the outset, it just looked like the wrong kind of move for him. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the move um, was financially driven. Um, I don't have any other explanation for it. Um, you've got to remember that you're not talking about a player, but you're talking about a, what they call the Neymar Project. Um, and, it, and it's quite an extraordinary thing. Actually, I don't think many people know that. When he, the reason why he stayed at, uh, in Brazil at Santos for so long, when people were expecting him to go to, you know, to Europe as soon as it was clear he was a, a genius with the ball, and that was very, very early on in his career, he decided to stay only to build his brand domestically and then internationally. And it's all part of, of a great marketing scheme. And the way he's moved clubs so far has been driven by this project. And they're very open about that, as in we want to maximize the value of the Neymar brand. And by going to PSG and, and being the main man in a team that has got prodigious resources, 
um, was, in their view, a way to broaden that appeal and, um, you know, to also work with a number of other sponsors and so forth. And it, it was very much a commercial choice, uh, not, I think, a personal choice. Why would you leave Barcelona, especially when you had, you know, we've seen what Messi has been doing since then. He, he was, I mean, there was, you know, there were some problems in that club, but nothing to justify him, you know, you know, closing the door in such a spectacular way. But it, it had to do with, uh, with the money, the money that Barcelona wanted to take, uh, the money that PSG was willing to give, and the money that he would be able to make in, in, in his career, as well as joining a team which had and has genuine expectations of becoming a very important team in Europe mm. and elsewhere. So it sort of makes sense. And I'm sure that, of course, if you look at the previous you know, two seasons, you think, well, what has he done? You know, he's won titles that anybody could have won. Um, because he's in such a, a big team. They failed in the Champions League and failed so spectacularly uh, and, and, and in, in that competition, uh, which is why, I mean, you know, in, in case people don't remember it, but the, 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 um, the quote that really drove people against Neymar was the reference to Barcelona uh, as, you know, and when Barcelona was the team that took out PSG in that famous remontada, and that people just cannot cannot swallow that. But yes, he is he is somebody who he's uh, he, he he's following a path that is quite unlike any other players. You know, you think about Cristiano Ronaldo, you think about Lionel Messi, which is the kind of category that he aspires to become part of, which is is not quite there yet. He hasn't won the Ballon d'Or. He hasn't done. He hasn't got the same honors list that these guys have, but he aspires to be there, and and they're convinced he can be there. But it is a unique trajectory, which is again the trajectory of a football player, and of also an asset to be branded and to be marketed to make as much mm-hmm. money as possible within the short span of a footballer's career. And this explains an awful lot of the uh, attitude we have towards him, the ambivalence. Um, you know, the talent, and at the same time, the histrionics, but also the brand and the hype around him. Yeah, you've explained that very well. I, I suppose he has to live with the day-to-day reality, the consequences of those decisions. Uh, for, for instance, it was quite telling that Leonardo, who's the director of football, obviously, at PSG, mm-hmm. in, re- in recent days, L'Equipe reported that at a training session, L'Equipe made the point to the team, from now on, French will be spoken. If someone doesn't understand it, they can take classes. Now, I've no yeah. doubt that Neymar isn't the only player there who doesn't speak French very well, but L'Equipe went on to say that he's never really been taught French or been all that interested in learning French. The big problem was the fact that the previous regime, that's the pre-Leonardo regime, uh, was an uneasy mixture of uh, managers who were trying to do their job as best they could and a board or people who were supposedly in charge not having a clue of what to do and giving far much far too much leeway to the playing staff. Uh, this is what actually accounted for Unai Emery, for example, who was very open about that, explaining that 50% of his staff, playing staff, that is, was buying into his project and the, and the, the rest of them just couldn't be bothered because they could do what the hell they wanted. And there was also the big problem of the Brazilian uh, nucleus within, within PSG, which was a team within the team and developed to such an extent that it had become really quite toxic uh, you know, I wouldn't in the, in the dressing room. In certainly, in terms of the, the dynamics and the fact that it was very difficult for wh- whichever manager was in place to, uh, well, to to build a project. It's different with Thomas Tuchel, who is definitely someone who has been brought in with an idea of putting in place uh, a system of play. Uh, is especially with the recruitment of Leonardo that changes everything. Leonardo is somebody that PSG fans were crying out for, you know, for him to return with somebody. Who is a disciplinarian and won't take any nonsense? And also, he's Brazilian, so he can put his point across in any way that you want. And in very good French, by the way. So there, there is a new order in place. Um, it's also very interesting that PSG's best performances, in some ways, uh, have come in games where neither Neymar nor Mbappe nor Cavani were playing, which is also something which has got people, uh, you know, talking. Uh, they've, they've had some really, really good games, um, and um, so. It's a new order which is put in place in Paris, more disciplined, less player power, more hands-on management, perhaps a greater say of the manager in the team he's putting on the, on, on the pitch, 
like for example, he wants to play with three midfielders. Well, the three midfielders would be uh, Ander Herrera, Marco Verratti, and um, and of course Idris Agüe, who is having a superb season uh, with PSG mm. since his arrival from Everton. Which means that there's going to be great competition for the places in the top, you know, in the three attacking places. And uh, you know, you, you, you've got Angel Di Maria is there, who is an absolute third in the starting lineup, mm. which which leaves us with Neymar, Cavani, and Mbappe. And Super Motting, but maybe I shouldn't have mentioned the last name. Mm. Uh, and Di Maria scored two against Madrid in a game where, as you've referenced, Mbappe, Cavani, Neymar don't figure. So very interesting times. I, I don't suppose anybody is going to close the 16-point gap in Ligue 1 on uh, <laughs> last year. Uh, no, what, what the about... league is over. <laughs> it's, it's, it's over. We can, we can all go home now. Yeah, congratulations, it's, it's, uh, PSG. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible because the, the teams we were expecting or hoping to put the challenge... Uh, and I'm thinking of Olympique Lyonnais in particular with the new order, Brazilians again, you know, Juninho Pernambucano coming back as sports director, Silvino coming uh, as a manager. Uh, though they were very inexperienced in many ways in that kind of uh, role, uh, people were hoping that the words, the final words they were saying uh, would be translated into reality. And the first two games, they scored 10 goals. And since then, it's been pretty, pretty dire. And uh, if you watch the game they played against Paris um, last weekend, they lost only 1-0 to this fabulous goal by Neymar. But for goodness sake, they didn't try anything. They didn't believe in it one second. Mm. So, yes, the league is over. I'm terribly sorry to, to report <laughs> that. Uh, nobody will catch them. And uh, we've played what? six games. Wow. So I guess, look, this all, to, to conclude then, this sounds like a very interesting dynamic with Neymar, with Tuchel and increased power and I suppose yep. with their ambitions in Europe. So I, there, there's quite a few storylines here to sit back and watch uh, develop over the next couple of months. By the way, you know, in Europe, for once this year, I think they could do, actually do something uh, in, with this new order in place. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll be talking to you across the season. Uh, Philippe, as ever, brilliant to have you on. Thanks so much. Thank you.